Hi, I'm Reb Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years. I'm going through the text again this year, asking Jesus to clarify for me as I read a little at a time. And then I write from that clarity, and that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. We're reading A Course in Miracles, Chapter 7, Section 4, Healing as a Recognition of Truth. And we're going to read the first two paragraphs. Paragraph 1 says, Truth can only be recognized and need only be recognized. Inspiration is of the Holy Spirit and certainty is of God according to his laws. Both, therefore, come from the same source, since inspiration comes from the voice for God and certainty comes from the laws of God. Healing does not come directly from God who knows his creations as perfectly whole. Yet healing is still of God because it proceeds from his voice and from his laws. It is their result in a state of mind that does not know him. The state is unknown to him and therefore does not exist. But those who sleep are unaware. Because they are unaware, they do not know. Well, this is certainly good news. Basically, Jesus is telling us that nothing is wrong. The problem is that we are unaware that nothing is wrong. And so we still ask, act as if it is wrong. We are in God, part of him. And so what we think of as our life could never be happening in truth, only in dreams. We can imagine a life of pain and suffering, but can pain and suffering be in God? Of course not. So it cannot be happening to us because we are in God. When we begin to imagine life outside reality, God placed the truth in our minds so that we could not become lost in our dreams. Now that we're ready to wake up from the dream of separation, the truth, the Holy Spirit, has been activated. We wake up because we want to wake up, and the Holy Spirit is our guide through the process of waking Exactly how this happens varies with each of us. The Holy Spirit knows the path our soul is to take and arranges each moment of our lives according to that path and in perfect timing. We really don't have to worry about any of that. We need only notice what is happening in our lives and our minds with a desire to become aware of our true selves. The healing is done of God through his voice. This is very exciting, isn't it? We thought it would be interesting to experience an illusory existence. Watching the truth unfold as we return our awareness to God is even more thrilling. So paragraph two, healing as a recognition of truth. The Holy Spirit must work through you to teach you that he is in you. This is an intermediary step toward the knowledge that you are in God because you're part of him. The miracles the Holy Spirit inspires can have no order of difficulty because every part of creation is of one order. This is God's will and yours. The laws of God establish this and the Holy Spirit reminds you of it. When you heal, you are remembering the laws of God and forgetting the laws of the ego. I said before that forgetting is merely a way of remembering better. It is therefore not the opposite of remembering when it is properly perceived. Perceived improperly, it induces a perception of conflict with something else, as all incorrect perception does. Properly perceived, it can be used as a way out of conflict, as all proper perception can. I remember when I joined a Unity Church, I was told that God is in me. This was a new concept for me, but I embraced it. Later, when I began to study A Course in Miracles, I decided that really I must be in God. I felt that was true, but couldn't fully wrap my mind around it. That was because I still saw myself as a body and separate, and as if all things were separate. Slowly, as I allowed my mind to heal more and more, I realized there was no separation. Separation is just an illusion, a magic trick. 
It's very realistic, but it's still just a trick. Then I could accept more completely that I am in God, as is all living things. I have no problem with this idea now. The shift that is occurring for me now is that the idea is moving from the head to the heart. It is becoming something more than a concept. Just as I had to ease into the concept, I've had to ease into the actuality of it. The way this is done for me is that I experience God moving through me. I ask for clarity and it comes through me. I ask for words to explain this clarity and they're given to me. I ask for the perfect way to help someone and the help comes through me. This is an intermediary step toward knowing I am in God because I am part of him. As I feel that I am part of God, I naturally let go of the idea that there is an order of difficulty in miracles. I forget the rules of the world, which dictate that everything is ordered by size and position, by difficulty and ease. That law used to be so self-evident to me, and now it's an artifact, a relic of a belief that left behind, a belief, a belief left behind through no effort on my part. It feels like a natural progression as I open more and more to the truth. In the world, forgetting is the opposite of remembering, but the Holy Spirit uses it differently. I must set aside what I now believe so I can make room for the truth. I forget the laws of the world so that I can fully remember the laws of God. Thus, forgetting is a step in remembering, not in conflict with remembering. So thank you so much for joining me in this reading. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, then please like it. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. And I'll be back soon with another reading. See you then.